All right, so here's my uh, high standard collection. It's uh, I've got nine of them total, plus a few accessories on some. Some are really nice, and some I just got a gun show as part of trades on others. Um, most of them are some form of a uh, citation or supermatic. This is a 107 military that I got. It was in kind of already slightly, I'd say maybe 80 percent, 90, maybe 90 percent bluing, like you can tell I hear. That's a little bit dingier. You can't really tell very well in light, but it's not as blue as the original bluing part. Um, this is a compensator that I got during the trade that I put on there, and it's kind of wore on the blue a little bit, so I just leave it on there. And that paint there on the orange tip is just something I put there so I can see the sights better while shooting it. Um, obviously, it's you know it's pretty easily removable. Um, this is another... I bought this for super cheap. Some guy had his uh, truck gun, and it was in really rough condition. Um, this is a military HD, um, which was a or a model HD military, but it was made during World War II and later. Um, it actually has an external hammer, which is different than most most uh, war guns. Uh, well, most of the high standards, most of the high standards had internal hammers, uh, like in this area here. Um, this is an older gun. This is, is one of the original type high standards. Um, uh, this still had the lever lock on the barrel release. Um, it's a model GD and that's like their medium grade. Uh, their GB was a base grade and I think it's a GB. And then the GE was the high end grade. They'll have like the fancy fluting on the handles and crap like that. So, um, that's a nice old gun. It shoots pretty well. Um, I've tried. I tried shooting it once at a, at a steel match, but uh, it's. Uh, I didn't really want to get into that too much. Um, this one shoots well. Um, the top bullet on the magazine that's included with it, um, or the last bullet, will uh, usually fail the feed or something. But all the other nine will go through perfectly without problem. This will shoot fine. This is another one like that one, but this is my shooter that I bought for cheaper, and this is the one I bought more just to be a collectible. It's got some kind of a, a compound or paint or something that was left in some of the some of the little etchings. And it's also a newer model. This is an ML model, which is made a little bit later, and this is like an earlier um, 231 serial number model. These are both 107s, which is the, the last series before they kind of went out of business. Um, this and this are my two like crown jewels. They're never going to be for sale. Um, but they're effectively, one of them's a 104 Olympic, um, which was a lot like the citation, which if you know the lines of the, um, models of the, uh, things, the cite, the citation was second to the top, the, the trophy being the top with the gold trigger and the high polish. Um, the citation was designed to be more of a shooter and, the trophies are tended to be more uh, collectible in a sense. Um, but the Olympic was kind of had some aspects of the uh, trophy, um, a lot more of the citation. They had steel triggers, um, but they all shot shorts. They were designed just specifically for the Olympics. So it's issues a little short bullet, which are very difficult to find these days. Um, <laughs> like you think 22, 22 long rifles. Are difficult to find. Um, try to find 22 shorts. Um, they're a lot more, and they're expensive when you do find them. Um, this is just a 104 trophy, and it's about as good condition as I could find when I was looking for one to add to my collection. And they're expensive when you find them. This one was out of some guy who died. They were selling off his estate on uh, the broker of guns website, um, but. Uh, other than just a few flaws here and there, it's it's pretty it's a pretty good put copy. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, that's my favorite, but I'm probably never going to shoot it. So that's how favorite guns go. Um, this was the first high standard I bought when I didn't really know a lot about them. Um, I kind of researched some of them, and this uh, is a Model 107. Uh, military this is an earlier serial, serial number uh, 189 series um, made uh, and so it's got a couple of spots I bought it specifically because I didn't want one that was like too uh, 
too perfect because I wanted one that I could shoot. So it's all it's real similar to this one in, in grade and, and all that stuff, but it's a it's got the fluted long barrel and again I've I've painted the tip. That that paint will come off if you don't want that. But um yeah. So uh, this is the one when I shot it, I so oh, wow. I, I love the way they shoot. And so it's the one that turned me on to the rest of them because I had I bought this in a model forty one Smith and Wesson. Um and man, this thing comparing the two side uh, yeah i i don't want to speak for one or the other but this one blew the other one out of the water big time i mean trigger trigger pull on all these guns like especially this one i mean it you, you almost don't even know you're pulling a trigger which is can be kind of dangerous you know a lot of people want more positive feedback um which gets me to this little gun i bought it as part of a trade um it's a uh sharpshooter which is kind of one of the like off brands that they sh that they made which didn't have some of the adjustability um if you notice some of these citations here um they have adjustable triggers and adjustable uh hammers and different things like that it was pretty much made to be a lot of nice components but just stuck together for a gun like it didn't have the uh um after the 104 the the slide the the back sight didn't ride over the slide on the slide like the way they did later in the 107s and the 106s. Um, that that works better for a fixed slide, but then you know it's harder to cock it because this will this will get your hand if you're not careful. Um, but this kind of kept some of those older uh, items. Oh, also one more thing: the 104 was the last year that they really kind of made the slant the slanted handle standard. Um, guys coming back from the military really liked the. Uh, the more upright handle that was like a 45 and so that's why they called them um the like this is actually sorry a 106 i thought i said it was a 107 but this is a 106 military which is indicative of the military sloped handle rather than their previous target handles which were the standard ones um so they call them military for a while and then after a while they just called them whatever the model number was um so when you get to the, uh, yeah, that one doesn't even say 107 on it. Okay, so, and and, and some of these are made in, uh, so this one's made in East Hartford, Connecticut. That's one that, like, people liked them better when they were made at the uh, um, the Hamden, Connecticut plant, like this one. Um, honestly, you're not going to tell much of a difference when you move to the one. The ML is when they started making them in the Hartford, Connecticut plant, and, and people kind of, uh, prefer the older ones this one is a uh, hamden connecticut you know and um, obviously the older ones are hamden connecticut the uh anyway so this one uh well let me talk about that i'll get back to that one um this one is a uh sears and roebuck sold version of the gun it was called duramatic is a high standard um it comes it, it's really different than the other ones but it, it was i mean if you ever wanted to find just like a base model type thing it, it came in a longer barrel and a shorter barrel and this is a shorter barrel model but you take apart the little screw down there at the base of the handle and you unscrew the barrel right there and the whole dang thing will just come apart into like 10 pieces or something like that and uh even the firing pin will come out real easy um when very little problems i mean it's completely serviceable just almost with with very few or no tools um but anyway so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to do this one-handed but pretty much this gun i've used as my shooter to for a steel challenge because it's got i, I replaced the, somebody had gone through it and um ground down the hammer to be extremely or um almost way too safe i mean it was a very heavy pull on the trigger so i replaced it with a stock hammer which the hammer is like a little round piece of steel with a with a cutout on one part where the where the uh, sear engagement uh, engages and the other part is just a flat part it comes down and it swings up and hits that thing so the little sear engagement they had ground it back so they engaged uh with a greater tolerance than what the stock one would do so i replaced that and a so when you're uh, breaking these things down, they all break down pretty similarly, except, I mean, yeah, we'll just say they all break down pretty similarly. But you pull back the slide, you lock you lock the slide. Well, it's hard to do with one hand, huh? Okay. One thing about them, 
their slide lock is on this side, which some people find um, awkward, but when you're shooting it, if you just put your finger up there, it, boom, you got it. You know, it's, you don't have to reach up here like some guns do, and that's the safety, you know. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, that's slide release. So get the slide release done, uh, or lock back. Then this button here, uh, it's going to be tough. It's manual, great manual dexterity in doing this here. Boom. All right. So it comes off. It's got a little lug that locks into a button there that you press, and that's the lug, and that's the barrel. Um, and you can buy aftermarket barrels for these things. Like this is an Alumilite barrel from Brown from Brown L's. I mean, these things are great if you want a a light a lightweight target barrel. Um, this is one I bought previously, thinking I wanted a heavy barrel. Um, it's made by Volkortz, and uh, I had to actually do quite a bit of work on the lug to make it um, to make it fit. Um, but once I once I got that in, it ended up just being way too front heavy. I mean, a stainless that's a lot of weight in the stainless barrel when you're trying to swing it around real fast and shoot quick during a steel challenge. Um, this one I put the you know a little red dot on it. It's a fancy red dot uh, on a fancy gun. Um, so you put these together, and this one is this is my shooter. Uh, uh, it's it's. Oh wait, hold on before I do that because. I gotta change the slide out. Anyways, the remainder of the removal process of this is to uh, slide the f slide forward. See, there's a hammer. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well. Camera's not focusing. I'm using my cell phone camera. Hope you don't mind. Um, anyway, that lug is what stops the slide, and you're supposed to use standard velocity uh, ammo for all these guns because. Uh, supposedly that lug will crack um, and as you can see I've kind of filed it down I, d I did that because I bought an aftermarket or you no know, some other used slide from some other gun some of his parting out and um, because this will not fit with this slide this this mounted up on the slide and I didn't want to take that off and I wanted to keep that with those parts so I keep those separately and I put this little slide back boy on here. So, see if we can. Okay, setting you down for a second. All right. Boom. Okay. So once it's on there, you know, you've got, you got, yeah, uh, yeah, high standard. And this is called a sharpshooter. And I got a little fancy Seymour. Uh, I wouldn't lie when I said fancy. I mean, if you go buy a Seymour, you're going to be paying quite a bit of money for a 22. Um, which has got an ultra bright dot, dot, and that's the main reason I bought it because you're shooting this during a sunny day, and you try to see the dot on some of the cheaper sites. Uh, yeah, you're shooting into the sun. Sometimes that dot won't show up, and uh, well, if it shows up, it's very br not very bright. But um, this gun is uh, real heavy here at the base um, because it's all steel. It's milled milled steel like uh, high standards were, and it's got aluminum barrel, so it, it swings real easy. But it still has the advantage of having a more rotational, eh, maybe more rotational mass so that when you shoot, it doesn't jump as much. So it's got some of the benefits of a heavier gun without the, like I can move it pretty quickly, when, especially if it comes with two hands, um, you know, shoot and steal. So that's my that's my fast gun along with, uh, I use a different gun for an iron, iron sight gun. But, um, so that's, that's my... Mm, huge collection uh, uh, I don't think it's as huge a collection but a lot of people are like oh, that's a lot of guns you know they're all high standards and so you get that a lot if you start collecting them um as a whole I tend to like these a lot more than the Rugers and everything mostly because they just have just really nice triggers I mean they I mean it, they're expensive and they get more expensive as time goes on just because 
uh, shoot, there's only so many of them made and they're on the internet and, you know, you've got to find them locally or any number of other things. And, you know, someday I'll be one of those old guys at a gun show selling them off, I'm sure. Um, but right now I'm young, so I'm trying to collect them. Um, so thank you. I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Um, and good luck, everybody.